it's Casey Kerfa, and I'm here with Adrian, and we are Hello. at Dimmitt's Grove this week. We're gonna do a little different, something different with our tour. So we thought we would give you some more, um, do history of some of the houses in Dimmitt's Grove. If you don't know where Dimmitt's Grove is, um, it is between Washington and Oakland, and then Clinton and Gridley. So it makes a square, pretty much. There's 26 blocks, so that would be 510 addresses to give you kind of an idea of how many homes are in the area. And then there is, the houses were built in the mid like 1800s. Some of them though were built as early as 1820s. And then they go to like late 1920s is when, you know, that's kind of just the overall time period of when the houses were built. And then Demons Grove also has a historic society or a neighborhood society and it was founded in eight, or 1986, seven, seven. seven. I always wanna say six. So anyways, we hope that you guys enjoy the tour. We're gonna to be talking about, I think we have five or six houses on our list. So we're gonna be actually walking the neighborhood and talking about the houses and their cool history. So we hope you enjoy. Yeah. All right, so actually Casey was just sitting on a bench in this little courtyard area, um, the Lincoln Oak Memorial. Which is on Jackson Street. Yep, on Jackson, right next to uh, the carriage house for Room and Mansion. And um, basically there was an oak tree here. This is not the original. They've replanted it in 1980. But um, both Abraham Lincoln and Douglas gave speeches under that tree. It was cut down in 77 and then um, replanted in 80 in honor of the original tree. So uh, the first historical, there's lots of historical houses, by the way. We got a lot of our info from uh, the Neighborhood Association page. It's great, demitsgrove.org. Um, so if you want to find out more about any of these yep. or... Uh, Bloomington or bn.org was a good site too. Yeah, uh, visitbn.org BN. yeah. um, had some great information. So we thank them for having that out there so that we could share that. Yeah. But um, this first one is 708 Vrooman Mansion, uh, or 708 Jackson. It's the Vrooman Mansion Carriage House. And it's super cool. It was um, originally, uh, the like I said, the carriage house for the Scott Vrooman Mansion. And it was built by Eli Barber in 1873. Actually, right next door on the other side was the Eli Barber um, cottage house. We're not, that's not on what we're talking about, but that's another one. There's a lot of other historic houses in this neighborhood. So yeah, um, we're just featuring. We're just picking a few, few. from some different blocks. Yep. Kind of give you. We're going to do a walking tour. So, um, but that the carriage house was redone. A um, few years back, it's you can stay there as part of the bed and breakfast. They've got a nice little bar area out back and a outdoor fireplace that are usable if you're staying there. Um, and we're kind of on the back side. This is the back side of Room and Mansion. So Room and Mansion takes up a large portion of the block. It goes all the way from Jackson to. Um, Clayton on the side, and then um, Taylor is the front of the house, so it goes the whole block. Mm -hmm. um, it's really well man or landscaped and cared for, um, and it is also a bed and breakfast. You can stay there. They have great breakfast. Um, you can rent it out for teas, parties, weddings. For weddings, um, if you go outside you can have more people so they let you kind of use this space here um inside so we're not going inside or anything today but um it's a great place to check out if you ever have family coming to town or anything like that you want something a little different um but it is um 708 east taylor's the scott Vrooman home it was purchased by Matthew Scott in the 1870s. Scott's son-in-law, Carl Vrooman, uh, lived in this Italianate Romanesque style home with his wife, Julia Scott. 
uh, Vrooman for many years. Mr. Vrooman was the assistant secretary um, of agriculture from 1914 to 1919 during the Wilson administration. So um, we're just gonna come around the front so you can get a, get a peek. Um, Casey, do you wanna talk about the Italianate? Um, yeah. What, what that is? Yeah, so um, you're gonna hear us talk about Italianate um, a few times on the tour just because that's kind of when these home, homes were built. But it is a, uh, it was a distinct 19th century phase in history of classical architecture. The Italianate style was first developed in Britain in about 1802 by John Nash, um, but it became widely popular in the United States between the 1840s and 1890s. Um, and the architect that kind of made that popular was named Alexander Jackson Davis. So he really, oh, so he really, um, made it popular and so like I said you're gonna hear us talk about Italianate kind of throughout our tour because um, that's just and you'll see a lot of the styles of the homes we feature they're gonna kind of look the same so well and if you hear Barry-esque ever yeah uh, that's also a term they use it yep. had to do with the architect that made it popular yep here in the US yeah so so yeah so we followed your or, uh, Britain basically yeah we did and then we're going to do a little walking tour for you guys. So our next one that we're going to is 502 South Clayton. South Clayton. Yeah. So the house we're going to go to, um, this was the former home of Lewis Von Thomas. His parents, William and Catherine, were some of the early settlers of the county. From 1872 to 1883, attorney John Hamilton lived in this Victorian farmhouse. So here so, we are. As you can see, yeah, it's very Victorian-like. Um, it's really pretty with all the red and the tans and the... It is. Um, but, and then the farmhouse was um, designated a national uh, register site in 1978. But then Hamilton was elected the 19th governor of Illinois after serving terms at Illinois State Senate and Lieutenant Governor. So it's kind of cool that the 19th governor lives right there. Yeah. So this is definitely one of the oldest neighborhoods in our community. Mm -hmm. And lots When I like was just out of college, Ooh. I lived here. <laughs> now we're gonna go to 421 East Road. And so there is a little other fun fact. Um, we're, on our, oh wait, we're on our way to Grove. Uh, the 400 
the 700 block of Grove Street became a National Register of Historian Places in 1986. So we've kind of seen some cool houses that were there on the National Registry. Yeah. Like we said, there's a bunch more too if you go to Demet's Grove. Yeah org to their HOA page. There's no HOA fee, I don't believe. It's just more of, of a, I think it's more just to inform you of the neighborhood, the history. Yeah. And it's cool too, because if you're looking at houses um, in the area, it's kind of cool to do history on them because when you buy the house, you are part of that history of the home. Yeah. So it's kind of cool because you're leaving your mark on a historical home. You and become one, part of the history. Yeah, and one day someone's gonna read about you. It's pretty cool. So it is a historic district. We're entering onto East Grove Street here. And we can find out certain historic districts have certain rules about what you can and cannot do to the outside of the house. So if you ever have questions um, about it, you can always ask us or... So um, the four to 700 block of East Grove. So this is right where we're starting here, right? So right where we came onto the street here, this is the beginning of the 400 block. As you can see, see there's a lot of other um, houses here and Demets Grove has these great little um, signs and you can just scan that in and get info about any of the houses, houses. that are it, yeah, that, have that. that are on there. But, um, the four to 700 block of East Grove Street became a National Register of Historic Places District in 1986. So, um, if you see, if you start looking like a lot of them in here, you can see have that Italianate style that, that like Casey was talking about, like a lot of the Italian influence. Mm -hmm. um, so you really get a lot of that feeling in this on this particular block here. Yes. There's so many cool houses. So it was right before the Victorian period. As you can see, this one's very Victorian in style. Yeah. Um, so you get some overlap. Um, and you definitely can see all the detail they used to put into these houses. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, so this block, there's a lot of the houses with the signs, so you can come learn about it. So um, if you're looking for something to do and you want to learn a little bit of history, yeah, come walk it. Come walk it. Um, so this so is the house that we are, we're going to talk about next. 21. Grove. So this brick Italian I home love was this built, house by the way. I know in 1870 by John Roosh. Roosh came to Bloomington after being involved in very successful Midwestern grocery stores. Um, but he was he was dragged by a but to death by a horse, by a runaway horse in 1884. So the poor guy only got to live here for 14 years before the runaway horse just took him down. What a way to go. <laughs> Poor guy. So very cool house though. Definitely the Italian, Italianate Romanesque style here. Yeah, it's super cool. Poor, poor John. Poor John. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, now we're going to go to 702 East Front. Um, if this is an area you're interested in, I'd say it's definitely something that we'd be able to find you something yeah. in in a fairly short amount of time. Yeah. Um, the price range in general in this neighborhood. It kind of varies really. Um, it go, I mean, so the average is about 110, but they go from any, I mean, there's some houses that are up into like the 250s, 290s. So, Really, it's a variation, which is kind of cool. Um, it's cool in the sense that you get all types of like demographics. 
in the neighborhood. Look at that house. So, I know. It's so pretty. I feel like that's been newly painted. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. And it's not the paint cans that gave it away. I actually just saw yeah. those now. Um, it and looks I like do, they're in the middle of painting it. Yeah, and I do love when the old, like the older Victorian homes, they keep the paint. They don't just paint everything. They make sure to, to, to you know, paint it how it should be painted. Which yeah. Is, usually the trim has a few different colors. The outside could train from four to some of them you even see four colors depending oh, on. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, depending on how intricate they can get. Yeah, that's true. So, um. But there's lots of them here in this neighborhood. There's a yeah. blue one. Actually, my sister used to live in these. Those are actually really cool apartments. apartments. Yeah, and you'll have that too in this neighborhood where they've taken an old, old house um, and then they've... they've it's really they've neat. Made that them, one, yeah, they've it, made them into apartments. So, so you don't have to buy. Yeah, you can always rent. architect Arthur Pillsbury. Um, it was built in 1904 for Illinois Wesleyan um, professor Delmar Delgardar. Um, and he was also the the he coached men's and women's basketball program at IWU. Um, he was a grand master of the Scottish Rite Lodge and wrote the American Passion Play, which has been produced locally since 1924. Very cool. And the architect, Arthur Pillsbury. Oh yeah, he's done a lot of houses in the area. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's kind of cool though too, just because there was a Wesleyan professor that also wrote a play and was a men and women's basketball coach. So, but we really hope that you guys enjoyed our tour this week. Um, and let us know if you liked it. We can do more of them, but we just thought it would be fun to give you some cool history. So we hope you have a great Thursday. Bye. Bye guys.